Good morning, welcome to Junior Church. Glad you could be with us today. We're going to have a wonderful time. It's just going to be great. Let's go ahead and start off with a word of prayer. Heads bowed, eyes closed, face your toes, don't pick your nose, you know how it goes. That's just gross. Okay, anyway, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful morning you've given us. Mother's Day. Help us to honor our mothers today. <laughs> Help us to do the best that we can to honor and glorify you as well. Well, thank you for all that's done. Help us to listen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, here we go. We're going to sing a song. Miss Sarah, come on down. God is so good. God is so good and that he answers prayer. God's still good. You know what? I was thinking about a cat the other day, and then I woke up. But anyhow, and I said, is that a dream or is that a nightmare? But anyhow, just kidding. If you like cats, that's fine. Um, more power to you. Okay? That's all I'll say. You may be wondering, what is he doing? He's covering the score. No, I'm not. I want to show you what we're going to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Brother Joseph, come on down and give me a hand. All right. Some of you have heard of, uh, grab that side, please. Thank you very much. Some of you have heard of Pictionary, where you have to draw a picture and everybody has to guess what you're drawing. Well, uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. It is flannel area. Oh, yeah, anyhow. Uh, so you have a flannel graph up here. We'll do a guy's turn, a girl's turn, a guy's turn, and a girl's turn. And we'll see who can guess the Bible story that they're putting up on the flannel graph, okay? If, the, uh, if they get it correct, Whatever team gets it correct, they get the points. And so it'd be 100 points per guess, okay? So it'd be that simple. Who wants to go first, guys or girls? Since you're already up here. All right, here we go. All right, I am going to write down a character. That's all you have to know is the character. You just holler out the character. And uh, Brother David, if you want to get out here where you can see it too, so that way it's uh, two and two. And then are guessing that one. Actually, it's two and three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ready? Here we go. You got... 30 oh, seconds. Boy. Go ahead. You got 30 seconds. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I know this is going to be a good one. Right there, Noah. 100 Wait. points, girl. Oh, man, I didn't even get to make the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 100 to the girls. All right, let's get a girl up here. Let's get a girl up here. Miss Haley, come up. You guessed it. Why not? Or was it Sarah? Who guessed it? It was Haley. Okay, here we go. All right, now. Most of these characters are guys up here, so I'll make it easier on you to pick a guy, okay? Are you sure? Alright. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> Peanut butter. Creamy, <laughs> creamy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. Daniel! Oh. Girls got it again! 100 points to the girls! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Okay, need another guy. Come on down, David. Come on down, brother David. All right, make it a little bit harder. You got it. David. All right, hundred points. The third name. Something that only a guy would think of. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard to do in pictures, so I wonder which portion of the story he's gonna use. That's a man looking the other direction. Jordan, I mean guys, right there. 
All right, uh, the guys have gone twice. I gotta get one more girl coming down, Miss Sarah. Oh, Sarah. All right, let's see here. Make it pretty easy. Okay. Places and uh, I was like, um, no, I was on the green screen. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, <sighs> take fun stuff. But anyhow, Elijah comes up and this is like his his game. Uh, he likes playing with the flannel graphs and stuff like that. And so he goes, Daddy, it's like a puzzle. It's like okay, yeah. Pretty good. All right, so the girls got three of them and the guys got one. So the guys are at a hundred points and the girls are at three hundred points. So, oh boy, I mean girl. All right, here we go. Excellent work. Hey, thank you for doing a great job. I'm sure at home you were like, I got it right. I knew which one it was. Yo, yo. Uh, sure you did. Uh, but anyhow, hey, we got a birthday this week. Actually, we got quite a few, but in the children's department, Lily Perkins, your birthday's coming up. So proud of you for having a birthday. <laughs> Good job. Uh, but anyhow, it's great stuff. My mom's birthday is this week. Uh, I have two sister-in-law's birthday this week. I mean, it's just a lot going on. But anyhow, praise the Lord for Mother's Day today, too. So good job with that. Oh, yeah, we forgot to tell her. Everybody tell Lily, happy birthday. Ready? Happy, happy birthday, Lily! Okay, good job. Awesome! Hey, if you're able to get online, it'd be a great thing to do, okay? So uh, make sure you have your parents' permission. Don't grab her card and say, hey, I'm going to get $500 to missions today. <laughs> and uh, no, you didn't. As a matter of fact, the Bible does talk about if a man uh, robbed his father and mother and thinks to himself there's no, uh, no harm. Anyway, it's in Proverbs. I just read it the other day. So it must have been early month. One of the earlier Proverbs. Anyhow, so still, hey, do the best that you can. Uh, to make sure you're able to give, that would be great. Hey, let's sing another song with the David. Come on down to the piano. Miss Haley, come on down to the pulpit. Let's sing. He's able. All right. All right, make sure you get up off your couch for this one. So if you're able to come tonight, it's going to be wonderful. You don't want to miss it. Uh, it's going to be exciting to be able to be back together in the house of the Lord. Amen. So it's going to kind of look like, be a, like a revival in a sense because everybody's going to be in the auditorium. Uh, kids, parents, teens, uh, babies. Uh, everybody that wants to come can come. Uh, obviously, you can look at the website and watch the, uh, the guidelines that we're requesting people to follow. But still, it's pretty neat. I'm looking forward to it tonight. And it's fun stuff. I'm actually pulling a funny because tomorrow we're videoing on Saturday. I'll have to be honest with you, and I'm on the platform tomorrow morning, so it's gonna, I'm gonna be in two places at once. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, fun stuff. I've never been on the platform on Sunday morning. Uh, but anyhow, hey, great stuff coming up. We uh, last week we had who can remember the name of the missionary? Brainerd. Brainerd. Okay, I was. 
you know, too bad we can't have your voices coming through. But anyway, David Brainerd, yes, okay? And uh, what a wonderful story. Honestly, we could have went five weeks on David Brainerd. And we could go five weeks on the lesson to uh, the person we're talking about today. But Fanny Crosby, Fanny Crosby, uh, she wrote tons, literally, <laughs> of uh, hymns and stuff like that, lots of poems. And so today, Brother Joseph, come on down and let's talk about Fanny Crosby. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm excited about it today. We're going to have a good time. And I'm excited I'm going to get to see some of you tonight at the service. Not everybody's going to be there, but we're going to have a great time praising the Lord and learning from the Bible and everything we normally do on Sunday night services. Everything except for touching each other. We're not going to do that. <laughs> well, great to be here again today. And last week we did learn about David Brainerd, great man that he was. He lived only to be 28 years old. Now today is kind of the opposite. Well, mainly because it's a girl that we're talking about. <laughs> but also because she lived to be 94 years old. She was born in 1820 and died in 1915. What? I know, it's crazy. But she was very elderly when she died. <clears throat> but, praise the Lord, she had a very long and productive life. Let's start off at the very beginning. She was born as a baby, much like most of you. <laughs> Anyways, well, as a newborn baby, uh, she was born healthy into this world. Her mom and dad loved her very much. They were both Christian parents. And uh, they cared for her and held her in their little arms. Wait, held her in their arms, though she was little. <clears throat> well, the, a sad thing happened, though. When Fanny Crosby was only mm, 10 weeks old, then she got a fever. And in her, during her fever, her eyes were very warm and they turned very red. So a doctor actually took some hot cloths with a salve on it, a hot lotion, and put that on her eyes thinking that he was going to make it better. But he actually blinded her. So Fanny Crosby, as a 10-week-old baby, was blinded. And she remained blind for the entire rest of her life. So the most interesting or the most unique thing about Fanny Crosby is that she was completely blind for almost her entire life. <clears throat> you say, what? A 94-year-old lady was blind? Yes, she lived to be 94 while blind. We'll learn a little bit about her here now. Well, uh, she, although she was blinded at that young age, it was a mistake by the doctor. It wasn't the normal doctor. It was a different doctor than usual because the other guy was out of town. But anyways, he was very saddened about it. But the parents did not get bitter at the doctor. And Fanny Crosby never once, when she got older, she never complained about it. We'll learn a little bit about how grateful she was to the Lord. Well, so Fanny Crosby, 10 weeks old, she was blinded. But the Lord still had great plans for her. And now another sad thing happened as when she was six months old, her dad passed away. So here Fanny Crosby is. She is born into this world, great healthy young baby, but then she's blinded at 10 weeks old. Her dad passes away at six months old. What's she going to do? How is this going to be a positive story? How is this going to be a good life? Well, God can take anything in this world that may seem to be bad for us, but he can make it good for everyone involved if they are just willing to trust him and see things from God's point of view. Well, Fanny Crosby, uh, she was at home a lot by herself as a baby because her mom, immediately as her dad died, then her mom had to go to work six days every week, working long hours every day just to be able to pay the bills. However, the good news is that Fanny Crosby's grandma, her granny, lived with them and she was able to take care of precious little Fanny Crosby. So it was Fanny's granny that was the nanny. <laughs> anyways, I'm sorry, there's so much poetry in Fanny Crosby's life, I just had to say something. <laughs> well, anyways, so back on point. So Fanny Crosby's grandmother was going to take care of her. <laughs> she would take Fanny Crosby, even as a little baby, and she would take Fanny Crosby for walks in the garden. And she would describe uh, God's beautiful world that he cre would create, or that he had created, he would she would describe it to little Fanny Crosby as she was just a little baby, and as she grew a little older, she would take her for walks in the garden, and she would talk about the beautiful uh, trees and the green leaves that they had, and the lush green color and the, and the solid stump that would grow up to be the tree, and she would describe the beautiful sun, and Fanny Crosby could feel the warmth of the sun on her face, and she would describe the little green grass that was just a soft blade of grass, almost prickly when you touch it, but really it's just soft, kind of tickles your feet when you run in it barefoot. Well, the, our grandma would describe all this beautiful nature that God created. And although Fanny Crosby would never get to see it with her eyes, she saw everything with her mind. Now, you may have an imagination like Fanny Crosby's, I don't know. Uh, I can see a lot of things in my mind's eye with my imagination. But Fanny Crosby, because she couldn't see it with her eyes, she had to see everything in her mind's eye. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. 
But that's kind of how she was able to see God so clearly. Because, first off, her granny taught her th three things. She taught her to enjoy the beauty of the world that God had created. Secondly, she taught her to always look, look on the positive side, always to be upbeat, always to enjoy this life that God had given her. So even though Fanny Crosby was blind and could never see anything, she never complained about it. <clears throat> I like ever, ever heard because her granny at a young age started teaching her these things, these principles that she would live by. And you may say, well, it must have been kind of boring being blind because I mean, you can't play video games if you can't see, you, you can't run outside, you can't uh, go uh, do anything. You know, if you're blind, you just run into stuff. Well, that's not true because Fanny Crosby would actually romp and play just as much as every one of the other kids. They lived in the country. So Fanny Crosby, I know this is hard to believe, but really, she would run through the fields and play with the other kids. She would climb trees. As a blind little girl, she climbed trees. Now, it's possible. I've tried it. <clears throat> if you just close your eyes, make sure you remember the branches are at, and be careful. You can climb trees even with your eyes. I don't suggest this. <laughs> Sorry, just in case, I don't want you to go out and break your arm or something like that because you tried to climb a tree with your eyes closed. But Fanny Crosby would climb trees. She would even ride a horse bareback through the fields and meadows without being able to see now, I know that's amazing, but uh, she was willing to try everything. And her grandma was always there by her side to encourage her. Whenever Fanny Crosby tried to do something and it was hard for her to do or she would get discouraged, her grandma was right there and would say, Hey, you can do that. You can push through anything. You can learn. You can grow. And you can do this. Well, at this young age, Fanny Crosby learned that she wanted to know more. She wanted to learn all of the great, vast knowledge that is in this world. Now, of course, she didn't know what the words fast knowledge were when she was just a two-year-old baby. But still, she started wondering, you know, what are all the things that I could learn about? And at that young age, this is the third thing that her grandmother taught her. First was the beauty of the world that God put her in. Secondly <clears throat> was the joy of life and the joy of living and the fact that, you know, we should be glad that we're alive. And thirdly was about the Bible. Now, they lived with another young lady that was a godly Christian. And at this house that they lived in, the grandmother would teach... Fanny Crosby the Bible, and also they said that the uh, lady that they lived with would also teach Fanny Crosby the Bible. And Fanny Crosby, by her own will, it wasn't like they whipped her and made her do these things, but she memorized, memorized in the Bible, committed to memory, like like uh, everything in the Bible you could memorize. Like, uh, okay, man, off, off the cuff, I can't really think, quote anything about John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whew, okay, I was able to quote that. Well, Fanny Crosby memorized, committed to her memory, Four, between four and five chapters of the Bible every single week. When she was at a little girl, between the ages of like five and ten, around those years, she was memorizing four or five chapters of the Bible every week. Now, this was only for a short period, but it was in that time period that she did this. Now, she did that until she had memorized Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, so the four Gospels, and then she memorized... Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, most of those four books, the first four books of the Bible, and also Psalms and most of Proverbs. So she had all these scriptures floating around in her head. Imagine this. If you weren't able to see anything, just close your eyes for a second, close your eyes for a second. If you can't see anything, what is, what is it that you're going to think about? You can't think about what you're looking at because you can't see anything. All you can see is what's in your mind's eye. What is in your imagination? Well, that... Fanny Crosby had all these Bible verses running through her mind and her imagination. So she was able to see God much more clearly than perhaps you or I can see God. Because she couldn't see things around her. It's like this. It's like this. Okay. So the Bible says that we, we see God by faith. Like I can see this world around me, but when I know that God exists, I can't see him. I have to imagine him. Except he's already there. Well, Fanny Crosby, she couldn't see the world around her. So guess what was easier for her to imagine? the God that she had read about and heard about. So she was able to see God in a different way than you and I. An amazing ability. But one day we'll all see God in his perfection face to face. And Fanny Crosby looked forward to that day. Well, as she was this little girl, she started to grow a little older. At eight years old, she wrote her first poem. At eight years old. <laughs> eight years old. She wrote her first poem. And it goes oh, something like this. It's like, um, Oh, what a happy soul am I. Although I cannot see. And then the next part of the verse. Oh, what a happy soul am I. Although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. So many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep or sigh because I'm blind. I cannot, nor I won't. Fanny Crosby penned that 
at the age of about eight years old. That was her first poem that she wrote. And she wrote many poetry, much poetry after that, many poems. Well, that first poem kind of characterized what she had decided with her life, that she wasn't going to complain or gripe because she was blind, but she was going to use it to its full advantage, and she was going to use whatever abilities God had given her to obey the, to obey the Lord. Now, when she was eight years old, she had written that poem. She started to write much more poetry. She actually memorized poetry by the books. They would give her, uh, they would read po poems to her, and she would memorize all the great poems the, of the great poets of the past. And as she memorized these, her memory was so good. Well, she wanted to learn more. She wanted to be able to read and be able to teach other people. So she prayed that she would be able to go to a school somewhere and learn. Well, that prayer was answered, and when she was 15 years old, she went to a college in New York, a school for the blind. And she was able to go to this school for the blind, and she learned how to read uh, Braille, you know, those little bumps. Have you ever seen on a, on a, when, like, when you're reading a, a placard or something like that, there's also little bumps right underneath it that are shaped like kind of little squigglies. They don't look like letters. They're like square, more square. Well, anyways, those are called Braille. And uh, Fanny Crosby learned to read Braille there at that school. She learned much more about poetry. She learned about the Bible and science and things, everything that God created in this beautiful world. Well, as she learned these things, she also began to write more poems herself, and she be able to, began to write songs. But at this point, she had never written a hymn, and she was not actually saved. You say, what? You're not even saved at this point? Yes. That's the one important thing that she actually did not do until she was 31 years old. Now, David Brainerd, he had, you know, remember last week, David Brainerd passed away by the age of 28? Well, if Fanny Crosby had passed away at 28, she wouldn't have, she hadn't accepted Christ as her Savior by that point. She never trusted the Lord Jesus as her Savior until she was 31. She memorized all this Bible and did all these good things, but all those good things weren't going to be able to get her into heaven because she was a sinner just like me and you. But she did learn about the love of the Lord and how that he cared for her and how that he, Jesus died on the cross to pay for her sins. And one day, she was going, she was at a revival service, and while she was there at the revival service, when she was 31, then she decided, you know what? That, well, she didn't decide. The Holy Spirit started speaking to her heart, and she went forward and knelt at the altar. All by herself, she went forward and prayed and accepted the Lord as her Savior. And she got saved on that very night. And right after she got saved, then she decided, you know what? If I, if I love the Lord this much, which I do, she's like, I love the Lord so much, I just want to give my life to the Lord and do whatever God wants me to do. Now, at this point, she still hadn't written any hymns for God. Now, that's the main thing that Fanny Crosby is known for, is the fact that she was blind, and also that she wrote a bunch of hymns, which are songs that we sing in church. I don't know, we don't sing a lot of hymns here in the junior church, but in the main, uh, the main church, super church, <laughs> no, in the adult church, the, uh, the hymns that they sing, that's exactly what Fanny Crosby was known for writing. But she hadn't even written any yet at this, at this point, at this age. When she was 31, she got saved, and then, we don't know much about between when she was 31 and 37, but when she was 37, she got married to another man that was there at the school that she went to for the blind. He was also a blind man. And they both taught in the school, helping other blind people to be able to learn how to read and write and to be able to do the things that they can do. And as she was doing this, she wrote much poetry and she was memorizing things and she was obeying the Lord. Well, she did not write her first hymn until she was 43 years old. One, two, three, four, three. 43 years old. She wrote her first hymn because she met another uh, musician who was famous and had, uh, who had a lot of music that he wanted to put godly words to. And so they met each other, and so she decided, you know what, I'll write a song for you that would you know, honor the Lord. So she started writing songs, and that was the beginning of her hymn writing career. And she wrote 8,000 songs. I'm not going to do how many tens that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, I'm just kidding. But she wrote around 8,000 songs. When she was older, in her upper years, she remembered that she had written about 6,000 songs. But she had never recorded exactly how many there were. Uh, well, by the time she had passed away in 1915, they said that she had written about 8,000 songs total. Now, I don't know how many songs you know, but I sincerely doubt that any of us know 8,000 songs in our mind. And you can save, phone, save songs onto your phone, and you can watch songs on your phone. You guys probably have your favorite songs that you sing, like, oh, la, 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 la. Well, she wrote 8,000 songs all about the Lord. These were hymns. She wrote other songs before, besides those things, but these were 8,000 songs that were in honor and glory to the Lord, and they were telling other people about Jesus Christ. There were many stories of people that, after hearing Fanny Crosby's songs that she had written, they trusted the Lord as their Savior because they were so full of the Bible. All those Bible verses that she had memorized when she was a kid, when she was a little girl, all that Bible she memorized, 
it came back to her, and she was using it to be able to write these songs for God and for good. And that was the amazing thing that happened for Fanny Crosby, that God was able to use her in these amazing ways. Now, if she had been able to see, she, she, she thought in her own mind, she wondered, you know, what, what if I had been able to see this whole time instead of being able to be blind? Well, she thought, you know what? I would, I would never want to be able to see after, after how God has been blessed in my life and allowed me to live the way I have. She was just so glad that the Lord had used her or been able to speak to her in the ways that he did because she was blind. She never wanted to be able to see, which is amazing because when we see people with a frailty or when we see, uh, I don't know if you're the same way, but when I see someone with a frailty or maybe a deformity or maybe they're handicapped in some way, then my first thought is, oh, that's too bad. You know, I wonder, I wonder how that happened. Well, because we're in a, a sin-cursed world, there are bad things that happen to everyone. But God is so almighty and so powerful in heaven, God can use even the worst things to be able to be good for those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. The Bible says that God can use any horrible thing that we would see as horrible. God doesn't see it as horrible because God can use it for good. God can use it in that person's life to help that person. And it's amazing, just like I said with Fanny Crosby a minute ago, she would be able to see God in a way that I would never be able to see God because I can see things around me much more clearly than I can see a God that I know is here, but I can't see. Well, she couldn't see the things around her, so she was able to see God much more clearly. And that's just one of the things that turned out to be a blessing for her life. Well, so she was saved at the age of 31, married at 37, started writing hymns at 43. She lived to be 94 years old, but I'm sorry, we actually, no, not a lot of exciting stuff happened between the time she was 43 until she was 94. So I don't have much to say, even though that was more than half of her life. That was, what, 48, 40... 52 years? Somewhere around there. Sorry, that was quick math. I think it was off. Well, anyways, so Fanny Crosby lived to be 94 years old. Now, it's, there was some exciting stuff that happened during that time. She was able to speak before Congress and put, quote poetry before uh, the House Representatives and the Senate. And she was able to uh, talk to the President and talk to different people. She traveled around the world being able to speak and write songs for people and be able to sing. They said that she had a very beautiful voice. Uh, well, she did all these things even though she was blind. Don't let anyone tell you that there's something that you cannot do because, because you have a frailty or you have something that's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody in this room is perfect. Nobody in this world is perfect. But God has good plans for you and he has big plans for you. And he has intentions of good things that you can happen, they can have happen in your life. But you've got to be willing to say, you know what? I'm not going to let the devil stop me. I'm not going to let uh, pain stop me or bad things stop me. I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do. And many good things can be accomplished by any person in this world. No matter what happens to you at a young age or at an older age, God can use you. And he used Fanny Crosby in that exact way. So there were also some amazing things happened. What, what amazes me is that she lived for this period of time, 1820 to 1915. Now, I'm not trying to sound like a history nerd or anything, and I don't know how much you kids know about history, but I'm going to tell you a little bit anyways. I'm wearing some cufflinks to remind you that, you know, she lived for a long time. These are hourglass cufflinks. Can you see that, Jordan? Okay. Okay, well, this one actually goes for 2.6 seconds. This one takes 5.1 seconds to go down. I did measure it multiple ways to make sure it was accurate. I don't know why they're not just 2.5 and five seconds, but either way, well, these hourglasses are used to measure time. She lived for 94 years, and you know what happened during that amount of time? She was born right after the War of 1812, and she lived all the way from, like, through the California Gold Rush, through the Civil War, uh, after Samuel Colt made the revolver way back when. She lived past 1911 when World War I started. She was very aged, and she had all these experiences that happened during her life, Many things. She even met one of the presidents, I think it was Grover Cleveland, one of the presidents, because he actually was an assistant there at the School for the Blind. All these amazing things happened in the world around her, but you know what? She kept her eyes on the Lord during that entire time. And I want you to think about that. No matter what goes on in your life, no matter what amazing things happen in the world, something like the coronavirus, the COVID-19 epidemic that we never imagined, the Lord is the same all the time. And you can stay the same too in obeying the Lord and serving God with your life, no matter what goes on around you. All right, I want you to remember that. And that was Fanny Crosby. Remember that well, and we'll see you later. Thank All you, Brother right. Josh. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's play a game. See how well you listen. Who's better than voice of the car? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is an easy game, yet hard to do. All right. 
How many of you have played this game before? Anybody in here? Miss Sarah's played it before? Okay, here is how it works. All you have to do is toss the ring and land it on one of the hooks. I will add a zero to the hook you land on. So if you land on the 13, it's 100 and what? 30, 30 points. points, okay? So you just toss it, that was a one, so I would have gotten 10. <laughs> but still, okay? Uh, that was a nine, so that would have been 90, okay? So you only get three shots, or tell you what, I'll let you throw all six. Uh, just because it's not as easy as it looks, okay? Mm -hmm. But anyhow, so you try and bring as many as you can. Some will stay, some will not. But anyhow, so you get six shots. Who's better, the boys or the girls? Yes. All right, easy question first. What was the name of the lady that we talked about hands down? Wait till I say go, hands down. Ready? Go. She still beat you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Fanny Crosby, come on down, and if you would, and you'll stand right about where that line is, and I'll give you ten of these guys, oh, do you have the girls? There you go. All right, she's got thirteen. The bouncer. said how old was she when she was born, but that was a dumb question. Uh, <laughs> zero! Okay. Uh, anyhow. Alright. If you, if you can, remember what year she passed away. What year did she pass away? Go. Yes, sir. 1915. 1915! I was hoping you would remember. Of all people. I'm sure I would, too. Alright. Did you get all six of them, sir? There you go. Alright, you got six shots. Where are uh, she was, no, she's about right there. Right, right there. Yeah, that, that line. <laughs> Forget that. Yeah, 70. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 28. Hopefully you learned it uh, in Sunday school already, uh, if you've watched <coughs> Sunday school already. But anyhow, I had several kids that were telling me they do junior church in the morning and Sunday school in the afternoon. Uh, Sunday school does become available at 945, just like a normal Sunday, so just letting you know that, okay? All right, Proverbs 31, 28, say it with me. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. You say what I say. You say what I say. <laughs> he. He. Oh, wow. Mama. 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 Proverbs. Proverbs. 31. 31. 28. 28. Her children. Her children. A wise up. A wise up. And call her. And call her. Question. Question. Her husband also. Her husband also. And he plays with her. And he plays with her. Proverbs 31 28. Proverbs 31 28. 
How well you can remember. Uh, I apologize. But anyhow, I used to crack up. But anyway, Proverbs 31 28. Where was it? Oh, brother. <laughs> All right, her children arise. What? Go. Yes, ma'am. Up. up. 100 points right there. Uh oh. Her children rise up and call her what? Hands down. Go. Jordan. Oh, blessed. Blessed! Sure, why not? I'll see it in a minute. Oh. I apologize. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> Alright, anyhow. At least she's not it's not a mental difficulty, it's a, a technical difficulty. I apologize. Okay. Hey. Where was it? Oh yeah, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her what also? Go. Yes, <laughs> ma'am, I said it. Her husband. Yes, her husband. Alright. No, you can't look for a husband. You need to look for somebody that's not married yet. <laughs> okay, and then... That's terrible. <laughs> she never runs out of the car, bless it. Her husband also, and he what? He, oh, I didn't say go. Yeah, I didn't sit down. Go. David's got it. Praise it. Praise it! Right there, okay. All right, I'm going to put all joking aside. I apologize. <laughs> Good job, y'all. Let's say it one last time together. Ready? Proverbs 31, 28. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, here we go. Today is a simple lesson, a simple message on show and tell. Show and tell. Have you ever gone to school before? Uh, hopefully. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> unless you're going into kindergarten. Uh, but still, if you ever gone to school before and uh, they had a show and tell? Mm -hmm. Now I was homeschooled for 13 years. Uh, but anyhow, but we still had a show and tell several times, okay? We had speech classes and stuff like that as well, to where we had to get up and say a speech, and uh, there were times we had to do the devotional for the family, uh, altar time and stuff like that, so our parents were prepping us for the ministry, you know what I mean? Uh, and there were times I was preaching at the dogs on the steps, uh, but anyhow, different things like that. I had a lot of fun memories when I was a kid, but anyhow... Uh, show and tell. Maybe, maybe there's something that you really enjoy doing. Maybe it's arts. Maybe uh, it's craft. Maybe it's playing the piano. Maybe there's something that you own uh, that's a show and tell. You show how it works and you tell uh, about it. You show what it does uh, and stuff like that. Well, I'm not actually going that direction today, okay? The show and tell is actually the sermon all in a nutshell, okay? Uh, and that is just that, okay? We're going to go to Proverbs chapter number four. Proverbs chapter number four. First one there gets nothing. Proverbs chapter number four. By the way, speaking of getting something, tonight at the service, if you said your memory verse in Patch Club, you'll get something, a special prize from this guy, and I'll make sure that you get that uh, tonight. Proverbs chapter number four, verse number three. If you there, say amen. amen. Good job. The Bible says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get right into the message. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning. Bless the time that we have together. Well, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go back to Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs chapter number 3. I'm sorry, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse number 3. The Bible says, For I was my father's son. 
Now, when you're reading that as a girl, I'm sorry, uh, but anyhow. <laughs> For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And uh, either he was the only child or, no, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, he says here that he was his father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of his mother. Uh, he says, my mother. Boys and girls, your mom looks at you as a precious thing. Your mom looks at you as beloved. Your mom looks at you as tender. And uh, your mom looks, well, I don't know, now that she's having to be your homeschool teacher, and she's having to, I'm just kidding. But anyhow, uh, some of them are believing what your teachers have been telling them now. Uh, but boys and girls, your mom has been doing the best that she can to make sure that you have uh, what you need. So therefore, we're going to talk today uh, through the book of Proverbs on how to love your mom on showing and telling. Showing and telling. Showing your mom that you love her and telling your mom that you love her. It's very important to show your mom that you love her. That's the first point. It's very simple. To show your mom that you love her. There's a lot of ways that you can show love. But one thing I like to do is the people that I really love, not in the sense that there's people that I really don't love, but you know what I mean. Uh, the people that are close to me, okay? Uh, the people that are close to me, I actually ask them, what are ways, or I watch them to try and find out ways that they want to be loved. Uh, try and find ways that they like to be loved. And that, for instance, some people don't like letters. That's just weird. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that, to receive a letter, it's not a big deal to them. Okay? Uh, so they got one, yeah, you know, they'll read it and throw it away. Okay? To some people, it's that way. To some, they got a letter. Oh, wow, thank you. And it means a lot to them. They store it. They put it away. As I've told you before, I mean, I've got shoe boxes after shoe boxes. I've got rubber maids. Uh, full of letters. I've got boxes full of letters. Uh, I keep every one. And sometimes I'll go back through them. It's almost like going through. Have you ever opened up your, your family picture box? And you go through memory after memory after memory. Uh, the other day we were going through some. And we've been married now going on six years next month. Uh, uh, what's 26 days from now? 27 days from now. Anyway, so, you know, we're going. Because <laughs> today's tomorrow. Uh, but anyhow, it's confusing. But we're, we're, you know, we got six years of pictures. That, that may not seem like much, but if you take as many pictures as we do, I mean, that's a lot of pictures to go through. And uh, so we're going through it, and it doesn't seem like it, but Andrew's five now. And so we got pictures to go through. And my mom uh, has a lot of pictures of us when we were little. And every once in a while, she'll send us a picture, and uh, I'll be like, I remember that, and I did that the next day, and... I got spankings for that. Okay, anyway. Uh, but anyhow, no, but you've got memories with your mom. You've got memories with your dad. But the Bible says here, he says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved, and the side of my mother. Now go to Proverbs chapter number 30 and verse number 17. Proverbs 30, 17, the Bible says, That I that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out. Ugh. And the young eagles shall eat it. What is he saying here? Let's go. He says, the eye that mocketh his father. What does that mean? What does that mean? Really, Dad? The eye that mocketh his father and despiseth to obey his mother. Show that you love your parents with your eyes. Show that you love your parents how your eyes treat them. If you have to stare in the mirror to see how you respond to things, okay, to work on how you control your eyes, all right, does this look rebellious? I don't know. You can't see the mirror now because you're looking up at your, your uh, what do you call these, lids, okay? Uh, yeah, obviously, if you turn your eyes off of them, most of the time, it's disrespectfully. you got to be careful with your eyes. Well, be careful, little eyes, what you see? Okay, anyway, <laughs> how the, uh, the attitude of the eyes. you got to be careful. Did you know your face can convey something that you really didn't even mean? Yeah, you're young. It's hard as a young person uh, to learn to control your face. You've got to be careful. It takes a while to learn how to control your face. It takes a while to learn how to control your tongue, okay? I still get tongue-tied sometimes. The other day, I mean, you can ask my wife. I, I call it the seat heater. Sometimes I call it the, the heat seater. Uh, sometimes the sanitizer. I call it the sand sanitizer, okay? Uh, but anyhow, I get my tongue tied sometimes, okay? Uh, but anyhow, my name is Wells Joshua. I'm just kidding. Uh, but still, but I'll, I'll say that the, the, the vacuum's in the closet, you know? But then I'll go around and say that the vacuum needs to be roomed. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> So I get my tongue tied sometimes. But anyhow, the eye that mocketh his father and despiseth to obey his mother, God says, it's I'm going to go send a raven down there to pluck it out. That's just nasty. 
your mom says, we need to wash out your mouth with soap. That's a lot nicer than what God said. <laughs> we don't pluck your eyeballs out. So I mean, don't roll your eyeballs at me. Anyway, look, don't sass off to your mama, okay? That's later. We're going to talk about that. But anyway, next, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 20, the Bible says, a wise son maketh a what? Glad father. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. I do think this is neat. He says, a wise son maketh a glad father. He's young. The son here is young, a wise son, and now, but a foolish man, he's grown, despiseth his mother. When you're old, you can still take the instruction of your father. Now, you can respectfully take it and take the wisdom that is there. You know, um, have you ever learned something from your parents and then your brother or your younger brother or younger sister make the same mistake and you're over there going... Wait till they see what happens after they do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, have you ever... Okay. Or maybe you're over there. I wouldn't do that. Oh, too late. Oh, man. I'm so sorry that happened to you. <laughs> okay, hopefully you don't do that. But anyway, a wise son maketh a glad father. How many want to make your daddy happy? Oh, yeah. I want to make my heavenly father happy, too. How many want to make your mother happy? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not just on Mother's Day, either, okay? But a foolish man despiseth his mother. It's almost like hatred. You don't like listening to her. You hate it when she comes over and she gives you this instruction. Look, I can't tell you how many times my dad has taught me how to tie a trash bag. He even taught me the same way over and over and over again. It doesn't matter how many times your father trains you how to do something. Just do what you're supposed to do. And do it with a good attitude. Next, Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 1, the Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon... He says, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. We're talking about Mother's Day today. How do you show love to your mom? Well, these are kind of like the opposites here. He says, a foolish son is heaviness to his mother. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. The Bible says that a foolish man, his feet are swift to do mischief. What's that mean? <laughs> Let's go over here and do this. <laughs> well, what, what, what did mama tell you to do? Not this, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, foolish man, swift to, his feet are swift to do mischief. Don't get into trouble all the time, okay? Your parents love you very much. They really do. They love you more than uh, I can love you. I can promise you that. I know the Lord loves you more. But even then, you're still supposed to honor your parents. You know, we've talked about it over and over again of children honor your father and mother. You know, but we really don't get down to the nitty-gritty of you controlling how you show your love to them. Oh, come on. Your mom tells you to take out the trash. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> she didn't see that, but God did. God did. And before you know it, you get used to those kind of things. And the more you get used to it, it's kind of like lying. You know, once you tell one lie, it builds up to another lie. We learned that uh, last week even. So you got to be careful of what you do. Next is very simple, tell. How do you tell your mom? So first we says show your mom. So when you're showing your mom that you love her, it's not just, love you, mom. Those are words. And, and, and words are important, believe me. I mean, whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They didn't know nothing. Okay. <laughs> they didn't know what they were talking about in that area, at least. The Bible says here, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words, what, stir up anger, right? Okay? Words are important. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number 20, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. I mean, it's going to be bad for him. Okay? Uh, the Bible also says in Proverbs chapter number 19, verse number 26, the Bible says, He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. Boys and girls, I hope that these described kids are not you. I hope that you honor your parents, not just with your eyes, not just with your words, but don't waste your father away. Don't make them old before they're old. Honor them. Respect them. Chaseth the way. Does that, does that necessarily mean... Uh, mom, you, 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 go away, go away. Uh, it could be. Have you ever told your mom, leave me alone? Hmm. 
ever told your mom, stay away, I'm in my room. Just a minute, mom. I'll be there in a minute. Everything's on your timetable. You're chasing away your mother. You're wasting away your father. You're wasting their own time. The Bible says, and chasing away his mother is a son that causeth shame. Now, let's look on the bright side of things, shall we? So let's look back, if we can, to the show. Look back to the, at the, to the show, if we can. What are some great ways to show your parents that you love them? Well, first off, we said that the eye. So did you know that your eyes can say, I love you? Sure they can. Most of the time, it's with a high cheek. Mm -hmm. The low cheek is the mad, and the high cheek is the glad. I, 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 like, I like drawing. I draw a lot, okay? Doodle or whatever. Uh, this is an iPad Pro, and so it has the, the, the pencil. I've got two iPad Pros, and you know, I, I draw on them quite a bit. Uh, doodle. <laughs> doodle, doodle, doodle. Okay, anyway. Uh, and it, it has this new thing called Sidecar, where it, it just sits right beside my computer, and it becomes a second screen to my computer, so I can open up Photoshop right on my laptop, uh, right on my iPad Pro and drawer right in there, just as if it's my computer. I'm like, sweet. I have a $3,000 uh, Wacom system in my office. Uh, no, don't steal it. Okay, but anyhow, uh, it's a touch screen, and you draw on the screen, and it's direct from there. Uh, but it still has like 3,000 levels of pressure. Pretty neat stuff. No, I'm not doing show and tell. Uh, but I say all that to say this. When I draw, I notice... Where the cheek is, many a times, shows the heart. Control your cheeks, okay? All right, I'll let your mom will. I'm just kidding. Right, but anyhow, <laughs> hopefully your mom won't control your cheeks. Uh, but you know what I mean, okay? When you smile, your cheeks go over here. No cheek. <laughs> and that's not what the Bible means by turn the other cheek, okay? Uh, turn the other cheek, mm? Okay, anyway, when you smile, turn your cheek. There you go. When you smile, when you what? Smile! You got these little perkies right here, and they're so big. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you can tell. You know what I mean, all right? When mommy tells you this, um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You see the difference? Cheek up. Yes, ma'am. Cheek down. Yes, ma'am. Your face is very readable. It's almost like you wrote on your forehead, I really didn't want to do this. Mm. Well, really, you wrote it on your cheeks. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I really don't want to do this. I'd rather be doing something else. You may have said yes ma'am on the outside. You may have respected your mom in the sense of words, but you're not respecting your mom in the sense of the action of the words. You're not backing it up with your face. So show her that you love her with her face. Man, when you go up to tell mom that you love her, smile about it, okay? Have those cheeks up. You know you can actually have the cheeks up without smiling. Okay, anyway. Uh, have the cheeks up and go, mom! You know, parents look at things like that, and they watch your eyes, too. Oh, come on. All right. You ever have a conversation with somebody? Let it focus. Okay. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're sitting there and you're, you're talking to them? So you pretend you're talking to me and they're doing this deal. <laughs> they're checking out every other thing in the room and then back on you. The door opens, so they look at the door and they're back at you. They really don't even have to move their head. It's just. You know what I mean? Okay, when your parents are talking to you, it should be eye to eye contact. Okay? Now, I don't wear contacts, praise the Lord. But anyway, eye to eye contact. And you're just literally not playing a staring game, you know, but uh, focusing on what they have to say. Your eyes show if you're paying attention. Now, I know uh, parents have to look away sometimes because you are running around. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I know if somebody's talking to me, there will be times where I'll, I'll kind of glance away because uh, one of my kids are doing something. Uh, and then we're like, you know. One second, please. I'm just I don't do that. I don't do that uh, in public. I mean, I don't do that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But still, you know, we correct. We have to correct our kids, and they have to take it correctly. Uh, correct the kids. They'll take it correctly. They'll have a great, correct life. Okay, anyway. But, you know, focus when your parents are talking to you. I have to teach my kids that because Andrew especially. I'm telling all my own son. But, you know, when I'm trying to discipline and get a, a point across to him when I'm talking to him, he likes to do this. Did you hear what I said, son? Yes, sir. And he's looking around the room. Does he really pay attention? <laughs> no. I grabbed his little cheeks nicely. And I pulled them over here. I said, where's my eyes? They go, right there. I said, look at my eyes. <laughs> well, look at my eyes when I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. And you know, he'll look at my eyes. And about four seconds later, <laughs> he's five now, five seconds later. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> attention spans last another second when you get older. Uh, <laughs> for every year, I'm 30, so give me about 30 seconds and I'm done, okay? <laughs> Anyhow, but still, it's just, you know what I'm talking about? So, when you're talking to your mom, show respect when she's talking to you. One thing my parents taught me uh, was when they're talking, it's rude to interrupt. If your mom and dad are talking to somebody else, don't go interrupt them. You know, your mom's talking to another lady and... And you go, Mom, I need that. Really? Can it wait? Yeah, sure it could. Don't interrupt. Okay? My parents had a sign. Oh, we had a sign for a lot of things. We had secret words for different things. Okay? Uh, cupcake. Uh, but anyhow, we have, <laughs> we have different words for even our, in our own home. Okay? But still, and my parents would go like this. If they're having a conversation and we're standing right there, you know, they go like this. And it doesn't look like much, you know. But to us, we knew it meant you're being nosy. Go away. This conversation has nothing to do with you. Okay, one of those, and we knew we shouldn't be here right now, <laughs> and we walk away so we wouldn't get in trouble later. Okay, uh, and uh, we'd be sitting in church, and my dad would go like this, and we knew when we got home that was one. <laughs> That's all it took, and we're like, I don't know if you've ever had that. I've had that look of, and that one right there, that one hurts the worst, okay? <laughs> Five times over. Uh, but anyhow, I don't know if you've ever sat there before and your mom looked at you and you, she's, you know, she had that what? That look. Ah, she had that look of, <laughs> you better listen up, sonny, or you're going to heaven. <laughs> I brought you into this world, I can take you out. Okay, never mind. Surely she wouldn't do that, but she may have said that. Uh, but still, <laughs> show your parents that you love them. Show them with your attitude. Show them with your attributes of your face, okay? They can read your face. Many a times you can't control it, but they can read it. They can tell if you're actually paying attention. That's why I keep getting in trouble. They're reading my face. I don't. I need to start carrying a, a mirror around. You're, you're thinking as a little kid, you know. Yes, ma'am. Oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, this is fun. This is awesome. Yes, sir. Oh, wait. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, uh, there was a little girl in the last church where we used to attend, in, uh, Grace Independent Baptist Church in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And uh, every time her parents told her to do something, her dad bragged on her at church one time. That's how I know. Uh, I wasn't, like, stalking. Uh, but, you know, her, her dad bragged on her and said that every time that we tell her to do something, she says, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. But then she says, I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to. I'll be glad to. Uh, and even that being said is showing that you love. Next we said tell. Tell. There's a lot of ways people can see that you love them, but they also like to hear it. You like to hear it. You've got five senses, right? And uh, each sense can read that somebody loves you. Well, today, I want, I want you to try to find one way that each one of your senses can tell your mom that you love her. Yep. So, your hands, the way you feel, the direction you want, whatever the case may be. Your hearing, your smelling, maybe, maybe a rose, that covers a lot of them. She can smell it. She can see it. Uh, you know, shake it. She'll hear it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Hopefully she won't eat it. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. Chocolate. That speaks very much volumes. They can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, maybe that's why chocolate, because it reaches that extra sense. Uh, but anyhow, they can touch it. They can smell it. They can hear it when they're opening that wrapper. Now I'm hungry. All right. But anyhow, <laughs> tell. Tell. Don't just show. Tell. You know, uh, my wife likes to hear me say, I love you. Uh, we have a group text with the Wells family, the Wells side of the family, and it's almost like social media, man. It's like we're, we throw photos on there. We It's a group text, but it's, I mean, <laughs> it gets more comments than any of your posts, I promise you. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> tons of stuff, but it, it's fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. And my dad, every night, without fail, every night, love y'all, have a great night, without fail. I can't remember the last time I hadn't seen one of those. Uh... And he kind of he's kind of like the one that starts it because he goes to bed before we do. Uh, but anyhow, uh, and so he'll send that mostly because he's not feeling well. It's usually about 9.30 we'll get that. Uh, but, but boys and girls, that, that, that verbal telling, it does go a long way. But let your face, what's the old saying? Your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. You can say one thing and your face read another. So as you're telling your parents, I love you. As you're telling your parents, happy Mother's Day. As you're talking to people, your face has to kind of convince them that you mean what you say. 
Okay. Now, obviously, uh, with Fanny Crosby, uh, there's even pictures of your voice that people could read. She couldn't see your face, but she could tell by the picture of your voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got to control, and it's hard to, but show and tell. The last thought. You know, like you were showing and telling that, ad that item at school? Did you know that your love is a show and tell? When you go to your mom, it should show and tell right off that you love her. With the way you talk to her, the way you respond to her, the way you simply show her, the way you simply tell her that you love her. So I hope today that it was a challenge to go to your mom and, and dad. Don't leave dad out. I mean, yeah, it's Mother's Day. But at the same time, don't stop loving dad just because it's Mother's Day. Okay. Uh, but still, maybe just something for mom. I know we mentioned about the, the I love you sign in Sunday school uh, and everything's like that. So I, I hope you paid attention. hope you learned. And really, I, I do hope that you love your parents. And not just, not just in word, but also in showing them. Okay? So do something to show them that you love them. Not with the... Okay, cheeks up. All right? Remember that. All right? That's going to be our little title for today. Cheeks up. All right? Anyhow. Hey, thank you so much for paying attention. Thanks for listening today. I know that uh, it's been a wonderful week. And the Lord's been very kind. And no matter what happens in life, the Lord's always kind. Right? God is always good. God is so good. I like that song. All right. Well, God bless you. Thanks for listening today. Don't forget tonight, 530, the doors open. 6 o'clock, the church starts. So you want to be here to get a good seat. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. Okay? Hope to see you there. And God bless you. Bye-bye. All right, sister. It's time to talk about what we learned today. Woohoo! Because it's more exciting than the score in this case. Well, <laughs> we learned about Fanny Crosby and how she was a blind lady. But she wrote a whole bunch of songs about the Lord. And we also learned about how we can show and tell our mothers that we love them in a good or a bad way. Good idea. Make sure you tell your mom's happy Mother's Day. Well, I guess we'd better go ahead and get around to the score. The boys came in with a great 690 points. Yeah! But the girls came in with 760 oh. points, taking the lead. Woo! Oh, man. Girls win again. Well, don't worry, boys. We'll get them next week, okay? No way. Have a good Mother's Day. See you guys next week.